Hello, my dear grade 8 students. Welcome back to our class. Again, this is your teacher, Miss Cabs. So, here we are again for our new exciting episode of our science class in Science 8. And as of today, this is a continuation of our discussion about earthquakes. So, we will know what is the relationship between earthquakes and tsunamis. So, mabuti pa sa earthquake at si tsunami, my relationship. Char. And this will be the um, last topic of our module 2. But of course, before we proceed to our lesson, if you are new to this channel, don't forget to subscribe, like, and hit the notification bell for more updates in our science class. And for today's objectives, uh, based on our most, most essential learning competencies are you're going to explain how tsunamis are generated and infer why tsunamis do not always occur even when there is an earthquake. So we only have two objectives for the day. In March 2011, a powerful earthquake took place in the Pacific Ocean near Japan. Afterward, a tsunami hit Japan, and 20,000 people were killed and more than a million houses and buildings were damaged or destroyed. And in December 2004, a strong earthquake occurred in Indian Ocean near Indonesia. A tsunami soon followed, and more than 200,000 people were confirmed dead, and many of them are from Indonesia, Thailand, India, and Sri Lanka. And in 1976, an earthquake took place in the Muro Gulf in Mindanao. Later on, a tsunami hit nearby coastal areas, and there are thousands of people were killed and many more were declared missing. So now, the question is, what is the connection between earthquakes and tsunamis? And what is a tsunami by the way? And how is it generated? In order to answer those questions, let us try to take a look at this video carefully. So if you have some time, you can also do this activity in your home for your Okay guys, so sa video kayo tumingin, wag sa akin. Char. Okay, so again, we are going to uh, look at the video in a slower motion. So now the question is, what was the water represent and how about the rock? What about the uh, plastic panel? Hmm? So the rock represents us the land and the plastic panel represents the fault that suddenly moves underwater and the water of course represents the sea again the rock represents the land and the plastic panel represents the fault that suddenly moves underwater and the water uh, represents as the sea water okay so here again, let us try to take a look the video in a very slow motion, slower motion. Okay. So as I jerk the edge of the plastic panel, what was formed in the water by the sudden push of the plastic panel? Try to take a look at the video. So there is a wave that was Formed. And how was the water level by the rock affected by waves? Okay, so as you can see, the water level went up. Okay, did you see it? Right. So, kitang kita nyo guys na uh, as I move the plastic panel or as I, as I suddenly push the plastic panel upward, so there is a wave that was 
formed and the water level went up as you can see na uh, tingnan natin to so kanina dito lang yung tubig no pag pag move ko ng plastic panel so biglang tumaas yung uh, level ng water okay Tsunamis is caused by energy generating underwater from a volcanic eruption, a submarine landslide, or commonly an earthquake on the ocean floor. Faults are found not only on land but also underwater. When a fault at the bottom of the sea suddenly moves, the water above it can be affected. A sudden push from an underwater fault can produce a wave called tsunami. Unlike a wave that is formed by the wind, a tsunami is much more powerful. Wind waves are just sea surface waves. In comparison, a tsunami involves the whole depth of the sea from the sea floor to the surface. From the shore, a tsunami is low, maybe just a meter high, but it travels at the speed of a jet plane moving 500 miles per hour. The wave speed slows down as its height rises to 100 feet. Yes. And uh, tsunami is very destructive because the force of the whole ocean is behind it. So this is why or this is the reason why whole towns and cities are totally devastated after a tsunami attack. So, how are earthquakes related to tsunamis? So, when a fault suddenly moves on land, you get an earthquake. But if a fault suddenly moves in or near a body of water, you may get a tsunami in addition to the earthquake. So, that is their relationship. Okay? So, again, when a fault suddenly moves on land, you get an earthquake but if a fault suddenly moves in or near a body of water you may get a tsunami in addition to the earthquake gets so when you are near the sea and you feel a strong earthquake what are you going to do and what if you ride a vehicle hmm Okay, so I hear you. So when you are near the sea and you feel an earthquake, of course, you have to treat this as a warning signal. You have to run to the highest place you can find. No, if possible, you have to run to the highest place. And uh, if, if you are riding a vehicle, so of course, you have to... Uh, um, Alert ka naman dapat na mag ano. Okay, so you have to evacuate inland. And yes, take note with this guys. Uh, not every fault movement beneath the sea will produce a tsunami. So those faults that move in a horizontal direction or sideways will not result in a tsunami. So could you still remember our... Uh, discussion in our previous topic the different movements of the fault right so in order to produce a tsunami the fault has to move in a vertical sense okay so again there will no tsunami if the fault movement is er is in horizontal direction or in a sideways so there will be a tsunami no if the fault movement is in a vertical sense okay so that's very simple guys so now you know that the, the relationship of the earthquake and the tsunami okay so i hope that you already know that is very very simple guys so yun lang yung pag uh pag ano ba yun yung relationship nilang dalawa no yung connection nilang dalawa so gaya nga ng sinabi ko mabuti pa sa earthquake at sea tsunami my relationship okay so char na yan guys okay so again um, 
uh, there will be a tsunami if the fault movement is in a vertical sense. So, um, I think that's all for this um, discussion for today. So, so, yes, and that's the end of our lesson for today. So, do you have any clarifications or questions? Don't forget to write it in our comment box. Okay, thank you and I hope that you learned something in this video. See you next time kids. Bye-bye.